Hello there. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to draw an activity on node or AON project network, and also to determine what the earliest start and finish times and the latest start and finish times are, as well as identifying any slack and what the critical path is. This example is based on problems 310 and 311 in your text. And what I've done is combine them into one video. So here we have a list of activities in the first table. We've got eight tasks ranging from activity A all the way to activity H. The first table just identifies what the predecessor relationships are. And then the second table for the same set of activities, A through H, identifies the time it takes. So what I've done is created activity nodes in advance for A through H, each with the respective completion times in weeks, from six all the way through to seven weeks. So our first objective is to construct an AON network for these activities. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see that both A and B do not have any predecessors, so both of those are our beginning nodes. Then if we look at activities C and D, both succeed activity A. So we'll put activity C about here, activity D about here. And then if you look at activities E and F, they are immediately preceded by B. So we'll take E, put it about there, and F, we can put it about here. We can even move B down a little bit just to center it a little bit nicer between those two. And G is preceded by activities C and E. So if we take G, well, I guess it kind of doesn't matter where we put them because C is at the top and E is further down. So we'll put activity G about here and H is preceded by D and F. So we'll put this something like that here. And now we can join with our arrows. Now you'll also notice that we don't have a single start or end node. So what we're going to have to do is insert a couple of ovals. And there we have it. There is our completed network diagram. And that, in essence, solves the requirement to problem 3.10. After putting in the activity times, our second objective is to determine what's called the earliest start and earliest finish times, also known as ES and EF, and the latest start and latest finish times, also known as LS and LF, for each activity as, as well as the slack. We'll also be able to determine the project completion time and the critical path. So in the diagram, I've already included the activity times. And in order to figure out the earliest start and finish times, we can do something called a forward pass. So both of the activities a and B start at time zero. So we'll start with activity A first. That starts at zero. Well, zero plus six means that activity A will end after six weeks. These are known as the earliest start and earliest finish. So the earliest activity A can start is immediately, but the earliest it can finish is in six weeks. If we look at activity B, of course, it can start immediately. And if we add the seven weeks that it takes, the earliest it can finish is in seven weeks. So again, earliest start, earliest finish. And then what we need to do is make our way through the diagram. So we'll go back to activity A and you can see that both C and D come after activity A. So what's going to happen is the earliest finish time from activity A becomes the earliest start time for activity C. ES of six plus three equals an earliest finish time of nine weeks. If you look at activity D, that six weeks also becomes the earliest start time for activity D. It takes two weeks to complete, so the earliest we can finish is at the end of week eight. If we go back down to B and look at activities E and F, which succeed it, the earliest activity E can start is in seven weeks. It takes four weeks to complete, so the earliest that it can be completed is in 11 weeks. F can also start on the seventh week plus six weeks means that the earliest it can finish is 13. Activity G is preceded by both C and E. Now this is interesting. So what we have to do is we have to look for the larger number of the two. Activity C's earliest finish is nine weeks, but activity E's earliest finish is 11 weeks. So that means that the earliest that G can start is in 11 weeks. It takes 10 weeks to complete, and so the earliest it can finish is in 21 weeks. If we look at activity H, it's preceded by D and F. Well, the earliest that activity D can be complete is in eight weeks, and the earliest finish for activity F is 13. Well, we must take the larger of the two numbers, 
which is going to be the 13 weeks, add seven, because that's how long activity H takes, and that will be 20 weeks. Now we can determine when the project can be complete. Well, remembering from all the other examples that we had done, the highest number or the longest time in the critical path is how long the project takes. So that is 21 weeks, which is the earliest that we can finish. So that's a forward pass. And we use that to determine the earliest start and the earliest finish times. Well, we're also asked to determine the latest start and the latest finished. Well, in order to determine those, we're going to use a backward pass, which means we're going to work backwards through the diagram. And we use that to determine the latest start and latest finish. And we'll do this in red. So the, the latest finish time for the project is 21 weeks. And because the last activities are G and H, which means that the latest that H can be completed is in 21 weeks. And if we take 21 minus seven, this gives us 14 weeks. So the 21 is the latest finish and 14 weeks is the latest start. If we just look at this node, that means that the earliest start time for activity H is 13 weeks. The earliest finish is 20 weeks. The latest start is 14, the latest finish is 21. We need to work on activity G and carry 21. Take 21 minus 10, that's 11. So now continuing to work through, if we look at G, G is uh, preceded by C and uh, E. It doesn't matter which one we go with first, we can go with E. You could see that the latest that E can start is 11 weeks, 11 minus four is seven. If you look at activity C, the latest it can finish is 11 weeks, minus three is eight. If we look at activity H and feed that back through D, that means that the latest D can start is 14 weeks minus the two weeks that it takes, it means that the latest that D can start is in 12 weeks. Activity F also precedes activity H, so the latest it can finish is 14 weeks, minus six is eight. We're getting close to the end here. If we look at activity B, you can see that B is preceded by both E and F, but what we have to do is take the smaller number. The latest start for E is seven weeks and the latest start for F is eight weeks. We bring back the smaller number. So seven minus seven is zero. If we look at activity A, it's preceded by activity C and D, but what we have to do is take the smaller number back. So we'll take eight minus six is two. And that means that activity A, the latest that it can start is in two weeks, the latest it can finish is in eight weeks. So what this means is that with a forward pass to determine the earliest start and finish lines, we carry forward the larger predecessor time. But when we're looking at a backward pass to calculate the, large, the latest start and finish times, we carry back the smaller successor times. So that's the rule of thumb. So for each of these nodes, we now have an earlier start and earlier finish. Now what we can do is we can put all this into a table. So what I've done is I pre-populated a table for all of the activities that include their times. And from our diagram that we already have, we can determine what, we can fill in the earliest start and finish times and then identify the critical path. You can identify the critical path from the visual as well. I mean, as you can see, by working through, the critical path is actually going to be B, E, G for 21 weeks. But what we can do is prove that using our table. So activity A, the earliest it can start is at time zero immediately. It takes six weeks to complete, so the earliest that it can finish is six. Activity B is zero and seven. Activity C then, because it's preceded by A, the earliest that it can start is six, takes three weeks and gives us nine. So six plus three is nine. For activity D, we see that the earliest it can start is six, eight. Again, if we look at activity E from our diagram, uh, the earliest it can start is seven, takes four weeks, 11. So seven plus four is 11. Activity F, seven plus six is 13. Activity G, 11 is the earliest it can start. It takes 10, so it gives us 21 weeks. And activity H, the earliest it can start is 13 weeks, plus seven is 20. And then summarizing the backward pass, the latest that uh, activity A can start 
is two weeks and the latest finish is eight. B is zero and seven. C is eight and 11. D is 12 and 14. E seven and 11. F eight and 14. G 11 and 21 and H, 14 and 21. The next thing that we can do is calculate what's called the slack. And the slack is just the difference between any of the earliest start and latest starts or earliest finish and latest finish. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. So if we look at activity A, for example, the difference between the earliest and latest start times is two. Well, the difference between the latest start and finish times is eight minus six is also two. Well, if we see this in the table, we can take, doesn't matter, the earliest start and earliest finish, eight minus six gives us a slack of two. Well, that means, slack means that the activity isn't critical and that we can actually delay when we start it. So we don't have to start activity A immediately. We can actually wait two weeks to start it if we needed the time or if we needed to allocate resources to another activity or a different project. If we look at activity B, notice that the difference between the latest start and finish is seven minus seven is zero, and also the earliest start and finish is zero. Activity C, we have slack of 11 minus nine or eight minus six, which is two. D, 14 minus eight or 12 minus six is six. E has zero slack because 11 minus 11 or seven minus seven is zero. F, so 14 minus 13 is one, or eight minus seven is one. G has slack of zero, and H has slack of one. Now what you'll notice is that any activity that has zero slack actually lies on the critical path. There can be no delay as to when the activity starts and finishes. All other activities are not on the critical path, and therefore, all have slack. So if we had resources like individuals that we needed to deploy elsewhere, we could wait two weeks for activity A to start and put them on another project. Activity D in fact has the most slack with six weeks, which means that any of these resources that were used for activity D can be put onto another project as long as they're brought back by week 12, which is the latest start time to keep the project on task. So that's how we draw an AOA project network and use a forward pass to determine the earliest start and finish times and a backward pass to determine the latest start and finish times, which help us identify the critical path.